Hey everyone, Derek here with basically my journal of Pokemon Go, and specifically day one, or day one and a quarter, because, you know, came out last night, it's basically been 24 hours, and I've been trying to cover the game as much as I can, trying to experience as much as I can, every aspect of it, in order to just get a better idea of it for a upcoming video. And, you know, I had very little hope for this game. It looked kind of generic, it didn't look like anything I wanted to do on a mobile game, it just seemed like, well, kind of a gimmick. And it still might be, it really might be. It all depends on how long my interest lasts, and if Tomo is any con uh, indication, that might be very little, because Tomo did not grab me at all after the first day. And Pokemon Go so far has been maintaining. I'm actually still interested, I'm still excited to get out there and find more Pokemon. And so, that's what these journals are, it's just sort of my thoughts on the game as I go through it to see if this initial like of the game will continue. To see if I start being down on it, start getting bored with it, start just not enjoying it as much. And I'm curious to see how that'll go, and I hope you guys join me for this, because I want to hear your thoughts and see what you think of the game so far, how your experiences are going, and whether or not it's worth your time. So, we'll just start from the beginning, where you make your character uh, from the very limited options. I think you've got three options for each aspect of your trainer, the hat, the, the shirt, the pants, the backpack, the shoes, that type of thing. And, you know, it'd be nice to have more options, but honestly you don't see your character that often other than running around and nobody else is seeing it so you really have nobody else to impress the only time it pops up is during gym battles and even that's kind of limited based on where you live or how often you do gym battles it's just a way to you know sort of distinguish yourself not nothing too bad or anything like that what i do have not an issue with but i just don't like is professor willow his design at least his as a as a professor he's a professor he's not really he doesn't stand out in any real way he's basically he, he might as well be professor oak at this rate i almost would have preferred that considering you know it's kanto and whatnot but willow his design is just so busy and just i don't know best i can put it is kind of futuristic doc brownish if you had a lab coat I, that's the best way I could do it, because he's just over-designed and just not interesting. He seems like just kind of overdone, and it's just not really that appealing to me. I mean, it's not a huge deal, because Willow does not appear that often. He gets, he's there at the beginning, he's there when you first um, take on gyms, and I don't think I'll ever see him since, unless we, maybe, maybe if he com completes your Pokedex, he'll pop up. Who knows? And so it's it's such a minor thing, but Willow, I, I've yet to see anybody actually likes his design, but yeah, whatever, no big deal. Once you get your character set up and get your name and all that completed, it's then that you move on to your starter. And like Kanto, you get to pick between Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and Charmander. And I, being the f my, my favorite Pokemon is Squirtle, so of course I'm going to pick Squirtle, and right off the bat, it's really cool to see these Pokemon in your your life. You know, I got Squirtle, I was in my house at the time, and he's in my kitchen. That's cool. You know, it's, it's, you know it's fake and all that, but there's just something appealing about seeing a Pokemon there, and I've seen a lot of funny pictures out there of Pokemon in different situations, people reacting to, to them, people hanging out with them, all kinds of various things. People are having fun with this idea that Pokemon are actually out there in the real world Kinda, thanks to this augmented reality, and it's just kind of fun, so I caught Squirtle, but the funny thing is, starters matter so little in this game, especially if there's no more starters in your area, because one of the things I was actually very hesitant about with Pokemon Go was its battle systems, and the fact that it basically had none. Your basic way to catch Pokemon is to just toss Pokeballs at it, and that's you know, to me at the time was just kind of boring, you know, it's like, oh, that's not exciting at all, you just sort of toss it. And because I'm the sort of, I'm the type when I play Pokemon that I don't catch multiples. I usually catch one to fill out the Pokedex and then go from there. I don't really care about IVs or EVs or anything like that. I just go through and just try to complete the Pokedex as much as I can. Yet, in Go, they encourage you to get multiples, and mul having multiples is key. 
because that is the only way you can get uh, Pokemon Candies and Stardust, both of which are necessary to make your Pokemon more powerful and eventually evolve. So if you want to evolve your Pokemon, you have to catch that same type of Pokemon many different times. And it becomes, you know, kind of interesting in that way because all of a sudden it's not just, oh, another Pidgey. It's, it's, now it's, oh, it's another Pidgey, which up until the point I get a Pidgeot, I'm very excited about that because that's a way for me to evolve that Pokemon and move on from there and of course get more Stardust for my other Pokemon. So getting Pokemon to appear and making that actually exciting and something that you want to happen, good on the Ontic for that one because they actually found a way to make it work. And I will even praise the fact that you just toss Pokeballs at the Pokemon because of the way that your this game is set up, that you're outside and moving around and doing things, you know, you need to have a quick method of catching Pokemon. So it makes sense to forego the battling and just toss a Pokeball. And there's still some skill involved. There's the whole timing aspect where you can get more uh, experience points if you do a better toss or better time toss. Or if you curve your toss, you'll get a little extra experience points, which will help your trainer and get you your ability to challenge gyms and other uh, special features. Well, nothing, not, not special, but expanded features of the game as you rise in level and at this point I've made my way to about eh, almost halfway to uh, level 7 I'm still level 6 uh, made decent progress I have not spent any real world money on the microtransactions in order to get stuff like lucky eggs in order to double double my experience I'm not really the type that likes to spend that extra money if it's a free to play game I want to make sure it's free to play because you know that temptation is there I I've, I've felt that temptation where oh man I wish I had an incense so I can catch these pokemon that are in the area or stuff like that but the thing is, in this day and some whatever, some change that I've been playing Pokemon Go, I have walked over seven kilometers. And I, you know, the thing, the funny thing is, I was trying to get into a walking habit last year, uh, towards the end of the year. I was trying to get myself just in better shape, you know, moving up, maybe not in like hardcore exercising or anything like that, but enough to get outside, see the sun, walk around a bit, and. I've just not been able to do that for a while because of just plain busyness when it comes to Game Explain. And to have Pokemon Go, which is ostensibly for the job, encourage me out there and do that, yeah, it's, it feels good to walk again. It's hot! It was up to 90 today, probably even more than that, and I uh, was sweating like crazy. But I didn't want to go in because I was catching new Pokemon, I was encountering things, and you know, I even went out last night at the middle of the night in order to just catch more because the thing that was getting me is that because of the server issues, which we'll get to those, late at night I realized, oh, the server's working. You know what? It might be 1, 2 a.m. Screw it. I'm still going to go outside and take a walk around my area, go to a nearby park uh, because that's where a uh, unclaimed gym was and I was hoping to maybe claim it that night, get enough Pokemon and wasn't able to do it that night. I did that this morning. But there was also some Poke Stops that I could uh, get. There's only about maybe five within my area, but they're not really close together like you see in Andre's videos. You actually have to walk quite a distance in order to get them. But the funny thing is, is while I was on my walk, not at night, but today at some point, because I've taken multiple walks in order to uh, catch Pokemon and do different things, I saw these guys on the other side of the street, a guy and his friend, and I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure that they were playing Pokemon Go too because I'd see them look down at their phone, look up, look down at their phone, look back up, just sort of checking where they're going and that sort of thing, uh, maybe touch it every so often, and the funny thing to me is I'm almost positive they're playing Pokemon Go. And you can already identify us. You can already, t if you know about the game, you can totally tell people that are playing Pokemon Go on their phones. You just they have that look where they're constantly looking at their phone, seeing what they have to do and moving around. And I've actually discovered that I can ma mostly do that. I ma mainly check to see if I'm in the same, the walking in the way I need to in order to encounter uh, Pokestops or various other things. Um, because the phone's act the game's actually very smart. You don't have to look at your phone the entire time unless you're trying to track a Pokemon. And I was able to basically just take my walk, keep my phone at my side, make sure Pokemon Go was running, and if I buzzed, I looked at my phone, saw the Pokemon, initiated the battle, was able to go, and hopefully avoid getting hurt. And that's the thing I'm actually most worried about with this game is 
somebody's gonna get hurt. It's gonna happen. They're encouraging it not to happen. It's a, there's a constant reminder to be on to look around for your what's around you to make sure that stuff like that doesn't happen. But it's inevitable. It really is. And I, I pray that nobody's gonna get seriously hurt over this. But just as a reminder, be very careful about this. I don't want anybody getting hurt over this game. It is a it is a very addictive game at the moment. And I could totally see people sort of just losing their way just looking at this map and not really looking around like they should be. I've been guilty of it already. I mean, I'm just like a... I try to maintain a constant awareness and I haven't gotten into any situations where I'd be in trouble, but I'm still seeing myself looking down at my phone way more often than I should. And, you know, it's definitely something that people are going to have to learn how to balance. But again, it is addictive because you see those Pokemon and the, the best example I have from today's experience is even though I chose Squirtle, I did not see any Squirtles around. I actually caught quite a few Pokemon. I've caught uh, over 50 Pokemon. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but I have filled out my Pokedex with 20 unique Pokemon and there are still others out there that I have yet to catch that I know are around, but I just haven't encountered them yet. But one of the ones that I have not encountered yet that I saw on my ra radar is a Bulbasaur and I couldn't find him. <laughs> I put him, I marked him and I walked back and forth all over the place trying to triangulate where this Bulbasaur was so I could catch him. I even used an incense to try to encourage it and I think the placement was like there's I went to a park and the park is overseas sort of like a section of uh, another part of the town and you have to go the road the road to take to get down to that lower part you have to go way around and way out of the way to get down there and I'm pretty sure that that's the way you have to go in order to get to the Bulbasaur which was very frustrating but I wasn't gonna I couldn't walk that far I'd be exhausted and you know that but that's the fun part I was excited to see this Bulbasaur I wanted to see you know what I could find what I could uh, get and I might not have caught it this time, but I'm still going to be on the lookout for multiple Bulbasaurs. And I was actually really excited last night because I caught an Eevee. I saw that Eevees were around and I really wanted to catch an Eevee because obviously it's an Eevee. Uh, and fortunately, in my further travels, I have caught more Eevee. Uh, as far as what I've done with the game, I have only evolved one Pokemon, which is Pidgey. Got him up to Pidgeotto. And I've actually caught an evolved Pokemon in the wild as well, a Kakuna, which actually confirms something I wasn't aware of. Basically, if you catch the evolved form, you will get Poke Candies for the base form. So the thing, the thing I was worried about was oh good, if I, I have to catch all these Pidgeys in order to get a Pidgeotto, and then I'm going to have to evolve a bunch of Pidgey, Pidgeys into Pidgeotto in order to get Pidgeotto candy, so I can get a, Pidge, a Pidgeot. And fortunately, that is not the case. All you have to do is keep catching those Pidgeys, and you'll eventually be able to evolve your Pidgeotto, or um, what have you, of the Pokemon that you've encountered. And thank goodness for that. Because, and, you know, because I caught that Kakuna, I realized this. I've also hatched a Pokemon. Now, I, I was actually went to a a game store today. It was just a local game store that's I was within decent walking distance, and there were actually a couple of people there that were playing Pokemon Go as well. They hadn't quite done enough as much as I had, but except for one guy who actually told me that he spent, I think he said three hours driving around with his kids in order to find more Pokemon, and it must have been successful because he, in driving around and just visiting various places, I got I think he said like. Uh, 10,000 Stardust or something, some crazy amount like that. And considering I'm sitting at maybe 3,000 after using quite a bit on Pidgeo Pidgeotto, wow. <laughs> it actually makes me wonder if I should drive around to different areas to see what I can find, to see what I can do. And that's crazy when I'm like, huh, I could drive to this place and start walking around and seeing what I find. Because the thing is, um, you also have eggs, and that's what I was going to bring up. And with eggs, you have to walk. You ha you can't drive and have the, the, the kilometers build up that way. You it, The GPS realizes when you're obviously going faster than a walking or maybe running speed. Uh, so it doesn't tally that, um, which is very smart. Yet he was still able to hatch one of his eggs, and he got a polywag, which I have not seen locally at all. And so I was actually really hopeful when I was hatching my egg, and my my egg hatched, and I hatched, and I got a Nidoran female. Oh well, I already had one of those, no big deal. But I was actually very curious because that hatched from a five-kilometer egg. I also have two-kilometer eggs, and I think one or two ten-kilometer eggs. So I'm curious if the amount of kilometers that you need to walk in order to hatch the egg denotes some kind of rareness with it. Not guaranteed, but I will say 
walking for hatching those eggs is definitely worth it. You get a ton of experience, you get a ton of Stardust, and you get a ton of um, candies for that Pokemon. So it's actually, when you get an egg from a Pokestop, it is really beneficial to hatch that thing. And once again, encouraging me to walk, encouraging me to exercise and get out there and do stuff. And wow, who knew? I, I've been enjoying it. I really have. But of course, the biggest issue is just the stability at the moment. There's, you know, there's still several countries out there that don't have the game yet, specifically Canada. I've talked, I've seen plenty of Canadian fans look at our coverage and just be like, why isn't it out here yet? And I'm sure it'll come here, come there very soon. But I have a feeling they're using the U.S. as a way to iron out all of the connection issues because boy does this thing like to crash uh, because I went to a Pokemon gym, claimed one, went to another, claimed it, and then I think somebody was living there. I didn't see anybody else, else around, but we were going back and forth claiming this one gym constantly and eventually I had to throw in the towel because I was just afraid of using up all my potions and revives and stuff like that because he was good. And uh, so I just had to, I had to throw in the towel there, but I've still, despite owning a gym, and that's not a great, no, it's not a huge level, but I have, I've only gotten 10 gold off of that thing, so they're kind of stingy with this, unless you have to really build up your gym to a certain point in order to make real bank in that, and that you don't have to use money for other stuff, because there's stuff, some stuff in the store I'd like to purchase, but I kind of want to earn it in the game, and it just seems like very a very difficult process to do that. But there are th three Pokemon gems in my immediate area. I've captured one that's in the park. There's another one that's sort of in a residential area that, uh, that that's the one I failed to fight over. And then there's another one that I tried to take and I got my butt kicked by a super, a very powerful Clefairy, uh, despite using six Pokemon. I got close, but I still lost it on my first attempt uh, because I was not powering up my Pokemon. I hadn't caught any super powerful Pokemon yet. And the guy just wiped the floor with me. He was at the local post office. And I actually went back there later today because I wanted to hatch the egg because I wanted to see the effects of hatching an egg. And I was like, okay, I got these powerful Pokemon. Let's take it on. And I fought it and I whooped that uh, Clefairy's butt and then it crashed and I didn't get the credit. Now, now granted, I also didn't, I, a few of my Pokemon had gotten fainted during the battle, so I wasn't able to, so I didn't lose them in that way that I had to use revives and potions in order to bring them back. But it still was crushing that I beat it. I was there and the game just <laughs> crashed on me and it's been doing that throughout it's really brutal when you use like an incense or something like that and the game crashes i've heard stories about that sort of thing and i think it's slowly getting more stable but one of the things that is actually very annoying for me is the sign-in process actually because i decided to use my google account and unfortunately the thing is well not unfortunately but the thing is i have a two-step lock to me, you know, secure it and all that stuff. But the problem is, every time I have to log into the log into the game, because sometimes it logs me out when I have to close it for a crash to try to maybe get the game to reload and rethink things and load it all up, I end up having to put in the two-step code again. And that's despite the fact that I said to remember this device. So I have inserted so many codes in this period of time that it is ridiculous well over 10 times trying to get it to work and it sometimes not even crashes it just sort of logs me out and that's very annoying but this is also growing pain so i'm not going to judge it too harshly on that i really hope neontic is working hard to fix these issues and make it a smooth launch for everybody else uh, around the world in order to make this happen but that is the biggest issue I've come across so far. Uh, battles are very simple. You just tap, swipe uh, to dodge, that sort of thing. And there's, I guess there's a little bit of strategy to it, but there's, it's very basic, but still kind of exciting when you take a gym and you claim it as your own and, you know, set up shop there. Cause I actually, when I was walking around again, I went to the gym that I had failed, that I had gone back and forth this, with this one guy on. I saw that somebody had taken over it, over it with a bee drill. And it was at level two and I was like, awesome, I'm going to bolster this one because we're both on team blue, go team blue, and make sure nobody can take this so I can get some freaking poke coins. So I did that and, and I haven't seen the results yet, but uh, it's, it's cool that, you know, you are building up this team aspect and hopefully it'll grow in uh, power and we can maintain it and sort of keep a foothold on it. So it's, it's pretty exciting that way to see how... You know, there, there's this sort of bond, but I also see, I saw online uh, somebody had uh, was in his car, 
getting this Pokemon gem, and apparently the guy in another car, like, just there, was also trying to get the gem, and they were basically going back and forth until the one guy, uh, got out of his car and just got into a shouting match with this guy about taking, constantly taking this gym. They both want this gym. And that is, be civil guys. I mean, I know it's, there is a competitive aspect. I know you want to take those gyms, but don't get that upset. <laughs> that is a bit, a bit ridiculous. Uh, other things that are notable, I, I found a Clefairy. Those things are hard to catch. I, um, I've encountered three of them so far. I've only caught one. And they are yellow, and I don't, and unfortunately, don't have a way of strong, throwing a stronger Pokeball or using a Raspberry in order to make my Pokeball throws more effective. But it is really tough to catch those things. They are very crafty, and I'm very curious how it's all going to go down. But yeah, I mean, that's basically my just first impressions of the game so far. I've taken many walks. I'm probably going to end up taking another walk late tonight as well, just because it feels like a good time where the servers aren't quite so overloaded, and I can get a little bit more done. So, I, you know, it's a good first impression. There are issues, but I am way more invested in this game than I ever thought I would be because when I was looking at it, I had no interest. I thought it looked kind of dull. It just wasn't doing anything for me. It seemed like a missed opportunity for a Pokemon mobile game because I wanted to make to them to integrate a lot of the stuff in the games to make you feel like a trainer. And I think that still is a possibility that I might start feeling that way. But the smartest feature that I've seen so far out of all of this are the gym battles. When you're losing your gym battle and you're seeing that you're you, that's happening, you want to take those back. So you want to catch more Pokemon. So you want to evolve your Pokemon. You want to strengthen your Pokemon so you can take that gym and hold that gym. It becomes a matter of pride. It's like, this is my territory. I want this and I'm going to work for it until I have it. And that is where the addiction is going to come in, at least for me. That is the important part to me. So... I don't know if you guys feel the same way about gym battles or in general when it comes to that, but I have uh, caught quite a few. I'm looking to catch some more. It's always interesting to hear what Pokemon people are uh, encountering that I am not. Like, for example, Andre has encountered uh, Doduo. I have never seen a Doduo, but he's never seen Clefairy or Eevee. So it's, it's interesting how there are some Pokemon that overlap while others just don't. And, like, the, the funny thing is, I've only seen one Rattata. <laughs> it's very uncommon where I'm at. They're, they're around, but not too common. So, yeah. I think that pretty much covers day one of Pokemon Go. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you'll join me for my report on day two and what I encounter there. So, with all that said, thank you guys for watching, and of course, stay tuned to Game Explained for more on Pokemon and other things gaming as well. Alright, guys. Bye.